And you're good to go, Chair. Great, thanks, Annie. Um, okay, so uh, we'll call the meeting to order um, at 5.07 p.m. Um, and so we'll just do a quick roll call. So I see we have uh, Alyssa here and Shelby and um, myself, uh, Ellen Smith. So I guess it's just the three of us. Um, so uh, since we don't have quorum, uh, we're just gonna skip a couple things. Um, so next thing on our list is we're gonna do a committee check-in. Um, so does anyone like to start just like we normally do a check-in? So uh, how's your summer been? What have you been doing to keeping busy? Um, I guess I'll start. Uh, so my name's Ellen Smith. I use she, her pronouns. And um, I spent the last couple days with my family um, at our family cottage in Bridgewater. So yeah, would anyone else like to go next? I'll go. My name's Alyssa Provo. I use she, her pronouns. And I am working at the Department of Health and Wellness. So I just started my summer job. So that's what I've been doing. My name is Shelby Baxter. I use she, her pronouns, and I've just been enjoying the beach in my local community. Awesome. Yeah, the weather's been really nice. Not today, but before that. Um, that's awesome. Um, okay, so uh, since we don't have quorum, uh, we're going to skip right to um, call for declaration of conflict of interests. Um, so does anyone have a uh, conflict of interest that they'd like to know now? No? Okay, great. Um, so uh, since there isn't any consideration of deferred business, we're gonna skip that for now. Um, uh, Annie, do we have any correspondence that has been we received any, I guess I should say. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's been no correspondence received. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and have we had any uh, petitions? Uh, thank you, Chair. There have been no petitions received by the clerk's office. Okay, great, thank you. Um, okay, uh, presentations, we don't have any. So we're going to skip to information of items brought forward, nothing there. Um, and so reports and discussions. So um, we don't have anything from, oh, sorry, we do have something from staff. So we have the regional plan, review themes and direction presentation. Um, and so I will pass it off to you, Leah. Great, thanks very much. And now my technology, <laughs> I have to remember how to do this. Uh, There we go. Can you see that? Yes, we can. We're good. Great. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks uh, very much for having me tonight. My name is Leah Perrin. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a principal planner with uh, regional planning here at HRM. And I'm here to introduce you to the regional plan review project. So I have the pleasure of leading the presentation today, but we have a great team of people that are working on this project. Uh, this is a, a slide showing the core project team and Shiloh Gempton is here with me tonight. And a project like the regional plan review cuts across the whole of our organization. And so many people have been working on this project with us and we like to acknowledge their contribution. So we're here today because we're reviewing the regional plan, which means we're evaluating our land use policies and making sure they represent the council that uh, sorry, the direction that council would like to set. We're contemplating how the municipality is physically organized and growing. We kicked off this phase of public engagement on the 20th of May, and we're accepting public comments until July 16th, uh, which is tomorrow. The website is our one-stop shop for all information on this plan review. So that's uh, shapeyourcityhalifax.ca slash regional dash plan. 
Now, just to take a step back and make sure everyone understands the regional plan. So it is a strategic document, and it was the first planning document that was adopted after amalgamation uh, that provided a region-wide vision for land use, so for all of HRM. And it was first adopted in 2006 and provided a comprehensive outline of how growth and development should take place between now and 2031. So the regional plan is powerful in guiding the municipality's planning and decision making. And it's a high level policy document. And so it does a few different things. Uh, first, the plan provides policy direction for planning at the regional and also community level. So the regional plan is sort of, sort of our highest level uh, land use plan. And it sits above our community plans or sometimes we call them secondary planning level documents and above our land use bylaws, which are regulatory documents. And it sets, uh, the regional plan sets that region-wide policy intent. And when something is important enough that it should apply everywhere and not just to one community, uh, the regional plan policy can set up land use bylaw regulations that will be applied region-wide. So that's done most often for our uh, environmental regulations. Um, for example, our setbacks from water courses, uh, those policies sit in the regional plan and then they're pushed down to regulations uh, for our land use bylaws at the community level. Um, it can also establish the municipality's intent to do future research programs or studies. So the 2006 regional plan called for a series of transportation priorities plans, including a road network plan. And then ultimately that became uh, the integrated mobility plan. And so with the adoption of the integrated mobility plan, there's a whole, uh, so a whole program of ongoing work related to it that will um, then get its own direction in the regional plan. And that's uh, one of the key components of our of our review right now is making sure that those two uh, documents kind of are aligned. And uh, finally, the regional plan identifies where there are needs for different types of programming or opportunities to partner with community or other, other levels of government. Um, so for example, our mobility network is managed by different levels of government. So obviously the province is managing our highways and the municipality is managing transit and, and our roads within the, within the city. Um, and it can also be supported through partnerships with other groups across our community. Um, so for, the, for example, the regional plan supports the Rural Transit Funding Program, which provides grants to community-based transit services in rural areas. Uh, so this presents the progression of the regional plan over the past 15 years. So in 2006, we approved the original plan, uh, plan with a 25 year horizon, and we intended to review it every five years. Now, obviously, those reviews, uh, they take a couple of years to, to go. So we started in 2011, our first review, and then it was adopted in 2014. Uh, and we started working on this review in 2020, and we're aiming to complete it in 2022. And then the end of the plan horizon is 2031. Uh, so the themes and directions document was released, recently released uh, back in May as our first major deliverable of this review. So it outlines the key ideas and planning issues we'll address in the review. It's a chance to step back and ask everyone, do we have this right? Are we headed in the right direction? Um, and then the feedback that we receive will help to provide focus and direction for our work during the review. <clears throat> so the themes and directions document includes 11 themes. They're uh, called considering the regional scale, building healthier and more complete communities, reconsidering employment and industrial lands, transforming how we move in our region, social planning for community well-being, celebrating culture and heritage, integrated community parks and facilities, enhancing environmental protection, leading through climate change and or leading through action on climate and imagining HRM into 2050 and beyond. And we also have a, a theme on assessing the impacts of COVID-19. So I won't go into detail of each of these themes during this presentation, but if you're interested in specific topics, I would invite you to visit our website to read the material. And I'm also happy to try to answer any questions that you have today. So there's a few key questions that we're trying to answer through the review. And the first is, how do we locate housing and employment in smart strategic locations so that growth can happen easily and in a way that furthers the municipality's most important goals? So we can break that down into two key questions. First, how are we growing? So we need to evaluate the projected demand for housing and employment today and into the future. Uh, to do this, we're relying on two key pieces of information. We have a, a preliminary housing and population analysis and uh, an industrial, industrial and employment land analysis. And the second question we ask is where should we grow? So once we know how much we're going to grow, 
we can begin to assess where new housing and jobs can be accommodated. So it isn't only about where there are pieces of land that can be developed, but where that land is located as it relates to the location of services and infrastructure. Uh, we can think about how and where we infill or where we should expand the city into greenfield areas. And this is done with careful consideration as to how development can be serviced with water, sewer, transit, recreation, and studying how we should be preserving or protecting important pieces of ecological or cultural land. And as Regional Council has identified aspirations for a sustainable future, such as uh, the integrated mobility plans, mode share targets, and the emission reduction targets in Halifax, we can adapt, update our modeling and assess how different land use growth scenarios might interact with those long-term objectives. And as we define how growth should be best located, we can also assess how that development should be organized to enable sustainable people-oriented design. Uh, we can also break the community scale, question, scale work down into two key questions. So how should our communities change as we grow? We can define our vision for how this new growth should occur. Uh, we've done this through the center plan process for the regional center, and now we're looking to continue this work in the suburban and rural areas of our municipality. Uh, we can set out what our community design objectives are and start to envision where centers, corridors, and other important places are and what they should become in the future. And we also will need to assess uh, how we'll organize brand new communities. So places where we're going to expand our service boundary are usually greenfield areas where um, uh, significant amounts of development haven't occurred already. And so as we build these brand new communities, we need to consider how the development can be organized to protect ecological and cultural resources, as well as how uh, regional infrastructure should be upgraded to accommodate the growth. And finally, as our region is growing, we can turn our minds to planning for the long term. So our ideas about what the future may look like could change drastically over a few decades. Factors such as immigration, climate change, social movements, and pandemics can all have a, a huge impact on how we plan our communities. Uh, the regional priorities plans that were initiated through the 2014 plan review uh, have started our focus on long range planning by creating work plans and policies that tackle topics like climate change, protecting and connecting our open spaces, nurturing our culture and heritage, and connecting our communities through a variety of means. So um, transit, active transportation, as well as vehicles. And now that the regional plan is nearing the end of its lifespan and our population growth has doubled since the last plan review, uh, it's time to begin thinking about what we want HRM to look like into the future. And as the last couple of years has taught us, society can change dramatically over a short time. Our planning asks us how the municipality can be better prepared to handle an uncertain future and to some extent even direct what the future can look like based on a shared vision. So we're especially interested to hear from this committee today. Uh, as young people, you have a unique perspective on, to, on how you wanna see your communities grow and change over time. And so I'm hoping to hear from you about what your ideas are in this area. Uh, so this is our key contact information. We're happy to take questions and comments from you today. Uh, we've been suggesting to the committees that we've been meeting that you may wish to submit a letter to us with your comments after this meeting. Uh, or if individual committee members would like to submit comments, we'd welcome that as well. And any com uh, questions or comments that we hear from you today will become part of the public record as well. Uh, the published deadline for comments is tomorrow, but we're happy to accept any routes and submissions a little later. So thank you very much, and I look forward to the discussion. Great. Thank you very Great. much. Um, does anyone have any questions? I guess we'll start off with there. Um, Shelby or Alyssa? No questions for you guys? Okay. Um, yeah, I think um, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for the presentation. I think it's very interesting. Um, and uh, I'm quite interested in the uh, 11 themes, I'm pretty sure it was, um, that you had talked about. So um, just to clarify, uh, those 11 themes are what you're going to be working towards um, for the rest of this regional plan. Um, yes. Okay, great. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, go ahead. 
Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm happy to happy to um, elaborate, I guess. So we have a we have an existing regional plan, but we've done a whole lot of work um, over the last uh, you know five years since the last regional plan review, and a lot of these new plans that we've uh, brought forward, like the integrated mobility plan or, or climate change plan, Halifax, um, the Halifax Free Network plan, uh, and we'll have a forthcoming uh, sharing our stories, culture and heritage priorities plan. All, all of those are like they're new pieces of work, and so we need to kind of give them, um, you know, some standing in our in our regional plan. And then we're also, you know, setting up for work as sort of crazy as it sounds like we're really coming to the end of the horizon of this plan, even though it's 10 years away, like 10 years happens in a flash in the planning world. So uh, we need to sort of think like long term and, and, you know, we're growing very quickly in this, this municipality. And so we're um, yeah, trying to get kind of a grapple on that. So, yeah, I mean, even if you your committee has thoughts on, um, you know, what's most important to you and your um, generation, honestly, uh, it's it's helpful because we we um, certainly hear from uh, lots of people on this plan review, but it skews older, to be honest, um, and I'm definitely interested in talking to youth. So even if you have ideas on engagement and how we could better engage youth, definitely interested in that. In that. Thank you very much for having us tonight. Yeah, of course, thanks for coming. Um, I think, uh, yeah, like you suggested, like even having a discussion, maybe we should have a discussion about it after. and. Um, I'd be happy to send you an email later on. Uh, uh, I'd like to review it a bit more and just uh, have some more time to figure things out. But uh, yeah, I'll be I'll send you an email for sure with my thoughts on it. Um, yeah, thank you. Any other thoughts from anyone else, Shelby or Lisa? I was just looking through the different themes and how many. I I like how much the overall was just like focusing on the environment and climate change. And I know it's like you said that the decisions were made by older generations because that's who's working on the project but I still see a decent chunk of what I think is important in the plan already and so I'm really happy to see that that our goals are all similar yeah climate change is something we've talked about a lot about on this committee um and so that's very exciting for me as well to, to hear that that's on there so Anything else for feedback or questions about this presentation or are we good to move on? Okay, so we're gonna move on to the work plan now. Thank you very much, Leah, for your presentation. Appreciate that. Um, okay, I'm going to pass this off to Annie now. She's going to chat about, we're gonna review the work plan a bit um, and we'll chat about that. I mean, we can't move the work plan uh, we don't have quorum, so we're not going to move the work plan forward or be able to um, uh, approve it tonight, but um, maybe just continuing the discussion on it. Uh. Great. Thank you, uh, Chair. So I'm just going to share my screen here so that everyone can see the, the work plan as it stands. Um, so uh, just to check it, everybody can, can see the work planning on their screen. Wonderful. Um, so basically uh, what I did since uh, the conversation that the committee had um, in April or, or May, all of the months are kind of blending together, but um, the conversation was had around, you know, identifying the themes that you folks wanted to work on, kind of aligning them with uh, the terms of reference so, um, so that everyone is kind of, you know, aware of how it's being tied into, uh, you know, the confines of what this committee can do. And uh, then I also just kind of took uh, some of the pieces that the committee had advised they would like to hear from on each of the topics. 
and uh, kind of had listed the uh, des like examples for desired outcomes that I, I thought that I had heard from the committee during the discussion. Um, and I have kind of left the just like the two kind of options that I had heard at the top. And if there is a desire to you know, have those desired outcomes or kind of like indicators between now and the end of the year to be the things that were the committee is working towards, you know, we can we can just put those in, in the other uh, areas as well um but yeah just you know it's been it's been a little bit since we've since we've all been together so i thought that i would at least just like refresh everyone's memory as to where uh where the work plan has kind of gone and um at the last meeting i believe there was an ask uh from the chair for for members to kind of bring back some organizations um that they would like to hear from on each of the topics that are listed here uh so just you know i think I'll, I'll just kind of keep this up on uh, up on the screen here, and if folks have organizations that they would like to uh, hear from and would like me to add to this document, uh, then I will I will kind of do that in real time as we're chatting, and uh, and then hopefully um, put at the next meeting of the uh, of the youth advisory committee, uh, we'll be able to send it along to executive standing committee for approval. So um, with that, I will turn it back over to you, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, I will be uh, taking some notes as we go along. Great, thanks, Annie. Um, so does anyone off the top of their head have any organizations that they thought of um, that we would like to add to this list? Um, I know we have the business units um, that we talked about from like within HRM. Um, that I know we had talked about, that was something really important to find out what is going on within HRM um, and what they're currently doing, um, but also outside organizations. So does anyone have anything that they'd like to add to this list that we would like to see a presentation from or anything like that? Um, I know, like just reading through here, I know we had talked about, uh, like, especially for the first one, so for mental health, um, like Stacy runs her own organization, so maybe asking her to give a presentation, um, and also some, these other few organizations we have currently, um, maybe starting off with those, and then um, maybe as we proceed through those presentations or learn more about these topics, we'll find more organizations to add to this list and maybe ask them for presentations or um, their thoughts or expertise on these then. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Start with these and then go from there. Yeah, also I was thinking how after like this meeting, like if we come up with like any other ideas, whatever, if we could just like send it along and then you can just add it like later. Yeah, for sure. And I think we do have quite a few members who aren't here tonight, so maybe they would have some thoughts as well. So um, maybe I will just send an email out to the committee and just let them know if they have any ideas to send them along in an email so we can add that to the list. Um, and then can uh, review that list again then next meeting. And uh, Madam Chair, I'd be happy to work with you on that as well. Um, if you wanted to kind of coordinate efforts on sending uh, those emails out or like having a discussion about how we can, you know, kind of compile all of that information between now and the next meeting uh, and get it kind of into this document in a way that's readable, uh, like I'd be um, more than happy to, to help out with that for sure. Um, do you mind if I ask one uh, more question, Madam Chair? Sorry, what was that? Can you say that? So I was wondering if I can ask one more question pertinent to oh. the to the work plan. To yes, the go ahead. Sorry. Okay, great. No worries. Uh, so the last piece that I'm that I'm wondering is um, if if folks are comfortable with the um, 
with the desired outcomes that we have kind of outlined here. And so the, the, the example that I've put forward is uh, to invite business units and organizations in the HRM working in this area to present to the committee, compile information, and pass recommendations along to the executive standing committee. Um, and, you know, this, the youth advisory committee, we like has the ability to, you know, like ask uh, a like organizations and business units to come to kind of speak to each of these issues. And then I think uh, potentially what could happen is there uh, a committee could have a discussion around how we can tie it back specifically to, um, you know, the impacts that are, uh, you know, being put forward on youth in the community. And, um, and then we can kind of, you can also like have in the same uh, kind of way that planning and development does this sometimes within the HRM where they have a what we heard uh, kind of report. And that could be something that could be passed along to the executive standing committee so that uh, council can end up considering, you know, and any recommendations that could come from uh, the presentations that the committee receives in the future. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of put put that out there and, and see if uh, if that was a desire that folks would like to, to kind of move towards uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, and I would also say that by by no means do they, if we're going to go in the, the direction of, uh, of, you know, drafting reports, by no means do they have to be, you know, each individual, uh, like each individual documents. I think um, each of these topics are both specific and broad enough that they overlap with one another. And I think there's a lot of consideration that can be given um, to, you know, lived experiences in each of these categories. So um, yeah, if that's just just putting it out there as, as uh, an idea of, of uh, what the committee could be working towards, but at the end of the day, I am uh, happy to, to work at the will of the committee. Awesome. Yeah, I think for myself, the desired outcome, the example there, that sounds great to me. Um, what do you guys think about that? I think it sounds good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I think that was exactly kind of what we talked about last time was compile enough information and then send um, our recommendations along to uh, yeah the executive standing committee. So yeah, that sounds great. Um, yeah, any other thoughts? Um, Anything we just talked about there? Or on the work plan in general, I guess? Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I guess I will, um, I'll work with Annie um, and we will send an email to the rest of the committee members and let them know that we discussed the work plan and any other um, suggestions for organizations or businesses or anything to pass along and we'll continue on with that list, keep that compiled in one list. Um, okay, what do we have next? Um, so since we don't have quorum, we'll continue on and hopefully next meeting we'll have quorum so we can pass the vote on this work plan. Um, yeah, I guess um, we'll do a checkout then at this point. Um, since there are no added items, um, I guess the next date of the meeting, or sorry, the date of our next meeting will be August 19th. Uh, 2021. Um, yeah, so I guess we'll just do a checkout. Does anyone have any thoughts on today's meeting? Um, what we chatted about today, anything with the work plan, the presentation, anything like that? Is there one area of the work plan you guys are looking forward to working on the most or hearing about? I'm 
looking forward for the um the second one with the systemic racism and focusing on that part because I feel like for me that's like very important and I'd like to see some progress in like the next few years with that so that's what I'm looking forward to great Shelby is there one in particular that stands out for you I'm looking forward to the first point dealing with the pandemic the COVID, the mental health, and seeing how, because that's going to have a large impact on the future and how we're going to deal with that in the, in the next plan. So, yeah, great. Um, okay, so um, I guess we will uh, adjourn the meeting. Um, so the meeting has been adjourned at um, 5.36 p.m. Thanks everyone.